before we begin, I want to share with you a page I've been sharing with some of you. So I'm going to do a quick little share screen. And that is, make sure it's going to come up properly. No, it's not coming up properly. Hold on a second. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so you should see here a web page on which, if you haven't seen it, I am posting all our poems and readings, plus other poems and readings that are kind of connected to the ones that we've listened to. So for last week, there was another um, poem um, that was very, a bunch of other poems that were really great poems uh, dedicated to Martin Luther King. And I know a lot of you are real uh, poetry hounds and I, I think would like some of these. So check out that, that's the link for this is in the little emails I send out. So if you're interested in reading more poetry or if you're just interested in seeing a copy of what it was that, uh, of what Tom read, Go to this website. You'll also see it has a link to the video, which will just take you over to the EDAO, the Episcopal the Diocese of Washington. Um, it'll open it up there in their um, YouTube account. And you can also see poems from previous weeks, plus the recording from previous weeks, as well as a little background information on the wisdom literature. So the very first week was St. Augustine, and the past two weeks, it's been something from the Gospels. So use this site to get more poetry and to get recordings of the, of the classes. And while I'm here, let me just show you where we're gonna be next week. This is a photograph, not of our Washington Diocese uh, Bishop, but of Eugene Sutton, who's the Bishop of Maryland. And he he and she are going to be talking about race and reckoning and an exploration of reparations. So a really heady, important topic. Um, so we're going to take a break from yoga next week. Uh, and I invite all of you to sign up. It's, it's free. I think it's a really important conversation. It's about, it'll touch on where the church has been. If you have any interest in the Episcopal church, it doesn't really have a great history. Uh, until fairly recently, recently it's, I think has a, a strong history, but not not historically um, in terms of um, its uh, racism and treatment of people of color. So I think really important. Uh, my husband is telling me I need to move on. Well, I'm saying you should point out the person peeking out from behind Gene Sutton's picture. Where? What I'm seeing. Oh, like oh, I didn't realize you had my whole screen. Yeah. Oh, that's my daughter, Camilla. That's beautiful. Just as a point of interest. Well, you can, I'll, I'll show you why. This is maybe a bit too personal, but you see, I'm making, I'm sticking my tongue out at her. <laughs> she, on the other hand, is beatific. I forgot to show you the whole screen. Anyway, okay, enough for sharing. <laughs> Let's get into yoga. So, welcome to evening yoga and prayer, everybody. Um, as we continue on into the light of epiphany, I'm very glad to have all of you join tonight as we worship, practice, and pray together. We're together for a few more weeks, four more weeks. Our practice will take us into, in fact, the first week of Lent. So just past Ash Wednesday. And we'll have a little, our, our last Friday together in the series, we'll have a, a little Lenten getting ready for Lent uh, practice. But up until then, our theme is Epiphany and our theme tonight is Miracles. Season of Epiphany is really all about miracles. And there are all sorts of miracles. There are wondrous events that transform the world. 
to little tiny happenings um, that we might miss if we look away. Um, and, and that's what our poem and our reading tonight focus on, the little small ones that if we don't pay attention, we won't even notice that they're there. And yet, if we do pay attention, they become events that, that change our lives to the extraordinarily transformative events in our lives that we might not associate with something divine or supreme, um, but if we stop and are present to it, we can allow uh, the sacred quality to, to be present to us. So part of tonight is to think about how we can stay awake and be alert to the miracles in our life. And it's, <clears throat> I think one of the things we've learned this past year is it's, it's very, excuse me, it's very easy to become inured by the pain um, that we experience and also just by the gross injustice we see around us and to forget that there are flashes of light in the world that enter into the world and that it's, it's valuable, it's important for us to pay attention to them. Our poet tonight is William Strafford. Uh, he um, tells us that a miracle may be small and that we are often tempted to not pay attention. Our wisdom reading is the Gospel of Matthew and it talks about a miracle, the transfiguration. That is so overwhelming that the people who witnessed it pretend it didn't happen. They wanna kind of put up little houses around themselves and say, Jesus, let's just stay here and forget about everything else and pretend this, this didn't even happen. This is, this is too big for us to think about. So miracles um, can have really different sorts of effects on us and we can hide from them. So tonight I ask you what miracles have you witnessed this week? And of course you may not have witnessed a miracle. Um, so another question is, are you prepared for ones that are to come? As I said, just a few notes, our last evening in the series will be February 19th. Next Friday, we take a short break to join, I hope, in a talk about race and reckoning. Um, and you can check out the link in the chat box to get more information about that. As always, all bodies are welcome here. This is your practice. If you don't feel like doing a pose fully, then please adapt it to make it uh, feel good in your body, to make it feel right. There's pushing in a pose that feels like you're broadening yourself and there's a push in a pose that feels painful. Go for the former and don't do the latter. Feel free always to be beatific and smile and let everyone else move. If that's what you feel like. Tom is here in the background and he, however, will be a core part of our practice as he reads the prayers and reads the poem and gives us our wisdom for tonight. So please pray, breathe, and move along with me. Peace on each one who comes in need. Peace on each one who comes in joy. Peace on each one who offers prayers. Peace on each one who comes who offers song. Peace of the maker, peace of the son. Peace of the spirit, the triune one. O holy one, as you have taught us to call the evening, the morning, and the noonday one day, and have made the sun to know it's going down, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that by your brightness we may know you to be the true God and eternal light, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. And now we come to a time where we join our voices in a large giving of voice in the eternal ohm. We will take in first three breaths and exhale. On the fourth inhale, we will all ohm together. And I invite you to 
everyone to say out loud, give out loud a gustio. Give your full breath to it, your full exhalation to it, um, as it is a way to wake up and open up your body. So breathing in, exhale, let all the air out. Inhale, exhale, release. Inhale, exhale, release. Inhale. Oh. Oh. Find a relaxed, comfortable position. Seated on your floor or your cushion. Keep your back straight. Keep your spine long, your head reaching up. Take your hands and allow them to rest gently on your thighs. Now close your eyes gently not squeezing them tight, but letting them just fall closed as if you were taking just a, a brief moment to close your eyes. Draw your shoulder blades down your back. Allow your jaw to relax and your tongue to soften your mouth. Really feel your tongue. See what it feels like for your tongue to soften. How often do we do that? Now begin to slow down your breath. Taking in a deep breath, becoming aware of your lungs expanding in your chest. It doesn't mean you have to take a deeper breath, it just means be aware of the breath that you're taking. Exhale completely. And as you breathe out, breathe out all the air. So you feel a complete emptying of your lungs. And then bring yourself fully into the present moment by becoming aware of the sensations of your physical body. And take your attention down to your right foot. Maybe wiggle your toes of your right foot. And imagine that your toes have turned into little beams of light. Maybe little pulsating beads of light, like the fingers of ET. Each toe is like a little ET finger pulsating with light. Then that light grows until your whole foot is glowing, is full of light. The light is coming from inside your foot. You can think to yourself, my whole foot, it has become, it's not full of, but it has become golden light. And then take your attention to your left foot. And imagine that it too has become golden light. So you are now 1 12th, 1 18th golden light. And imagine that golden light filling up your legs, starting at the ankles, going up your shins. And you can use your breath to pull the light up. 
So as you breathe down into your feet, into your ankles, into your shins, when you exhale, you pull the light back up with it. Breathing in. Exhaling, and the exhale is like a vacuum and it pulls the light up higher and higher up into your body. Now you're coming to your thighs and your pelvis and your hips, and they're all made of light, all full of golden light, and they're full of it. They are light, but because they're light, they're radiating. because they're light, they're radiating light. like the sun, energy, golden, golden energy. And imagine your breath going down into your hips and now into your belly, which is also filled with light. And when your breath goes down in, into your belly, it's like dropping a penny into a pool of water. There's a little plunk and the light expands around the breath. It ripples around the breath, this pool of light. And now breathe up, breathe the, the, breathe, breathe the light up into your chest. So your whole lower body, everything below your armpits is made out of light. Now say to yourself, my entire spine, my entire spine is made of golden light. Your heart and your lungs are expanding with light. Now it is infusing your neck. You can feel it. You can feel the warmth on your neck of this golden light filling you up, coming up to your skull, up to your forehead up to your eyebrows and eyes, your nose, your cheeks. They've all dissolved. They've all dissolved into light. This sort of bright golden epiphany light. And your brain is completely illuminated by this golden light. You can think to yourself, my entire body is light. It is filled with particles of blood, particles of light. And as you exhale, breathe in first. And as you exhale, you're breathing out light into the world. So rest now for a moment, breathing in and breathing out. Resting in this golden body of light. This epiphany light. And now choose an intention for yourself for this evening and for the week coming forward. Let your intention come from some miracle that you have witnessed. And if you haven't witnessed a miracle, some awareness on your part that you have that will prepare you to be aware, to be ready. So an intention that prepares you, and how will you remain aware and present? So choose an intention or hope for this session and breathe in your intention, breathe it in. Breathe it into this golden body of light. And say your intention to yourself in the present tense. I am, I am witness. I am justice. I am life, whatever your intention is. And then exhale all the air in your lungs, exhaling out the light. Breathing out any doubts about your intention. Placing them outside the room where you are, outside the building where you are, 
outside in the cold. Not with you where it's warm. Then feel God's presence wash over you. Feel a sense of peace and grace and offer yourself some appreciation for being here tonight. Then take your hands, rub your hands together, place them over your eyes. Open your eyes, look into your hands. And then take your hands away and greet the people around you and thank them for practicing with you tonight. Now we come to God with words of praise all around us in the example of others. In the unfurling of nature, we see the beauty of the divine. Light of the world in grace and beauty, mirror of God's eternal face, transparent flame of love's free duty, you bring salvation to our race. Now, as we see the lights of evening, we raise our voice in hymns of praise. Worthy are you of endless blessing, sun of our night, lamp of our days. Now we come to our moving prayer. Let's come on to our match. We're going to begin in seated pose. So simply seated on your mat, take your hands down onto the floor, lengthen your spine, looking up, then looking over to the right, to the left, and then to the right. Just beginning to begin, bring some rotation, some looseness to your hips, to your spine, and take your left hand to the front, your right hand to your side, to your back, twisting to the right and then twisting to the left, twisting to the left, right, twisting to the left, and perhaps taking your right hand to all the way to the far side, coming into a slightly deeper twist, inhaling, lifting your spine long, exhale, looking over your shoulder, other side, inhaling, lifting your spine long, exhaling, over your shoulder. And then we'll come back to front. We're going to inhale and we're going to exhale, folding all the way forward, taking our hands as far forward as we can. So we begin to feel a stretch in our lower hips, taking our head down toward the floor. Pausing for a moment. Coming back up and coming onto our mats, coming down into child's pose, taking your toes back behind you to touch your knees out as wide as your mat, lengthen, stretch your hands out long in front of you. If it's available to you, bring your chest down onto the mat and begin to feel your upper back opening, your shoulders opening, and then come up, and then down, walking up, and down, up, and down, and when you're down, take your hands over to the right, feeling the stretch along the left side of your body, And then hands all the way over to the left. And then coming back up. And we're going to come back in the table pose, pulling the belly in, drawing the shoulder blades down the back, extending the right arm long, left, 
leg long, bringing the elbow and the knee together, extending out long, elbow and knee, out long, elbow and knee, out long, and then taking the right hand back, grabbing the left leg, and coming here just for a gentle hip opener again, gentle right shoulder opener. So you're not yanking it up. You're trying to keep the left knee parallel with the ground beneath you. And then release, take the left arm, left arm long, extend the right leg out long behind you. Bring it in to touch, elbow and knee, extend out, elbow and knee, extend out, elbow and knee, extend out, left hand comes around. And again, we're keeping the torso strong, even gentle stretch to the right hip and quadriceps. Then it comes down. Then we're going to take the right foot, hold it on the left side so you can see it better. Left foot out long. And we're going to come over, taking the left hand to the left ankle and gently pull ourselves back and forth, keeping your spine long, belly strong. Right hand can support you right here, pulling ourselves in and out, in and out, keeping this left leg engaged. Left leg comes back. Take the right foot out, right hand comes to the right shin, drawing yourself toward the right shin and back toward the shin, back, toward the shin, back. Right knee comes back, and we're gonna come that back into downward dog, downward dog, pulling the belly in, begin to press the heels down toward the floor, maybe one heel at a time. Turn your arms toward the front of your mat, Press the cups of your hands down into the mat. And then walk your feet forward. Deep forward bend. Really, really release here, relax. In fact, I want you to take your hands to your lower neck or your upper neck. Your neck work begins to come into your skull. And press your fingers into the neck there. Just allow it to release. Give it a little tiny massage. Then let the arms go down. Inhale, hands all the way up your legs. Coming all the way up. Shoulder blades together. Arms back down. Inhale, arms all the way up. Hands come to your heart. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, release. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, deep forward bend. Inhale, halfway up. Hands come to your shins. Spine is long. Shoulder blades are down your back. Take your right foot back, your left foot back. You can come down, um, come down to Chaturanga. You can come down to full Chaturanga. You can come down into a shutter up with your knees on the ground. Either way, you then come up in the upward dog. Press back into downward dog. In downward dog, we're going to take the right leg up, bend the right knee. Take it around in a circle four times. And then take it around in a circle the other way four times. And then the right foot comes down, left leg up behind you, and the left knee around in a circle, opening up your hip, opening up your, juicing up the joint. And then left, around the other way. 
and the left foot comes down and then up to the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway up, hands on your shins, belly is strong. Exhale, hands down to the mat. Inhale, hands all the way up overhead. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, hands up one more time. Exhale, hands all the way down. Inhale, halfway up, long spine. Exhale, hands to the heart. Right foot back, left foot back, plank pose. And remembering here, in plank pose, keep a strong belly. And then before um, we come back into um, Chaturanga, we're going to um, work on drawing our right foot forward. So we're going to, instead of taking our right foot up, we're going to drag our right foot up. So I want you to drag your right foot up without lifting your body up. So normally, you would come into down dog and then take the right foot up. But we're going to practice this, and then we're going to back each other on um, So I want you to drag the right foot and do that as a way to get your right foot up to your right hand. Okay? And try it on the left foot. Drag your left foot. So you're going to keep your body straight. Drag your left foot. So you got it like that. So we're going to have that. Okay. This is something I learned in CrossFit. So it may not feel like a, a yoga move, but it's fun. Complicated faces. Okay. Uh, we're going down into Chaturanga. Inhale up into Upper Dog. Press back into Downward Dog. Walk your heels back and forth. Take your right foot up behind you. Open up your right knee. Then we're going to take the right knee over to the left, in, uh, over to the left elbow. Back, right knee to the left elbow. Back, right knee is going to come over to the left elbow and then long. So you're now have your right leg long. Going to take the left arm up. So you have this sort of um, angel, this flying warrior pose. Fallen, flying. And then back. Take the right foot back. Take the left leg up. Bring it over to the left elbow and back, sorry, the right elbow, left knee over to the right elbow and back, left foot all the way under, you slide it under, then you take the right arm up and back behind you, you're opening your heart up to the sky, up to the ceiling. And then take your right foot back in the downward dog. And now we come back into our plank pose. And remember what we were doing before. We're going to drag the right foot up. And then we're going to drag the left foot up. And then come all the way up. And exhale, hands to the heart. Take a deep breath in. And now we're going to come down into chair pose. Chair pose, your belly comes down onto your thighs. Take your hands back behind you. Inhale, up and back, up and back, up. And then hands down onto the mat. Feet bending as much as you can, knees bending as much as you can. Let your neck go. Take your hips up. 
bending your knees as much as you need to to get your hands onto the mat. Then we're going to take our hands back behind us, open them up, and then release. Take the right foot back, left foot back, come down into Chaturanga, inhale up, into Upward Dog, back, into Downward Dog. Dog. Take your right leg up, take your right foot. Now this time, instead of the flat back, we're going to really, really round the back. So belly comes in, bring your knee up into your belly. Right foot comes back, left foot is back in a crescent pose. Left thigh is really strong. Inhale, coming up into crescent. Arms are all the way up to the sky. Exhale back, the hands, hands come up, hands come back, hands come up, hands interlace at the small of your back, your heart opens up to the sky, and then you fold forward, chest coming down onto your thigh, and then release your hands. Take the right foot back, come down into Chaturanga, inhale up, take up for dog, press back into downward dog, take the left leg up behind you, bring the knee up, pull your belly in, left foot between the hands, right foot is up in crescent pose, coming up into crescent, hands all the way up overhead, Hands come back and up, pressing down firmly into your right foot, into your right toe bed, hands back and firmly into your full left foot, up, hands back, interlace your fingers, take your heart up to the sky, fold forward, your chest comes down onto your thighs, arms up overhead. Take your hands down onto your mat. Take your left foot back. Now into your strong plank. You can keep your knees up or down. Chaturanga. Inhale all the way up. Exhale back to downward dog. One more set of poses. We're going to take the right leg all the way up. Then the right knee. Take it around in a circle. And then take the right foot over to the knee. Once again, oh, wait a minute, I did this wrong. Right. Not forgotten. Oh, I guess we're not going to do that. Okay. Um, take your right foot forward. We're going to come into crescent pose. Inhale, arms all the way up. Exhale, hands interlace behind you. Come forward, hands interlaced overhead. Release the hands. Take the hands on either side. I mean, so, excuse me. Take your hands on the inside of your right foot. Then you can come down onto your forearms. You can take your knee down, or keep your knee up. You can stay up on your arms. Whichever one has the kind of stretch that you like, whichever you want to be. And then take your right arm forward, swing it around, and press back and forth, back and forth. And then we're going to come lengthwise on our mat so that we're now seated wherever you can. This, is a, this pose takes a lot of practice to get into. So if you don't get into it, just Play around with it. See, this is a playing around with it. And then we come over all the way to the left. So your left foot is flat on the mat. Your right foot is pointing up. Toes are pointing up through the ceiling. And then we're going to move back and forth. And again, don't worry about this. This is just for you to play with. Then come to the front of your mat. 
Take the right foot forward, down into your chaturanga of choice, up, press back to the downward dog. Take the left leg up, bring it forward between your hands, coming into crescent. Inhale up, exhale, hands come down on either side of your left foot. Coming all the way down. Now, sorry, we do extending the left arm long, taking the left hand around the left chin, and then taking the hands down onto the mat. And again, your knee can be up, your knee can be down, you can be up in your hands. So, four different positions. I like to be all the way down so I can open my hip up. And then coming back up. Now we take our arm around and then we release it. We come lengthwise on the mat, right foot down, left foot up, all the way over, right foot up, and back and forth. Using this as a time to play. And come to the front of your mat. Left foot comes back. One final chaturanga. Inhale all the way up. Upward dog. Press back to downward dog. We're going to pause here for three breaths as we prepare ourselves to come into prayer. May your breath even itself out. And come down onto your knees and Tom and I will continue with our reading of Psalm 139. Holy One, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places. You are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there's not a word on my lips, but you, O oh God, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made and your works are wonderful and I know it well. Now we come to our wisdom reading from the gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And while he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud, a voice said, this is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone.
So I asked you before what miracle you had witnessed this week. What came to mind when you set your intention for yourself? And honestly, perhaps you didn't think of anything. Epiphany, as we've said, is the season of miracles. The idea is that it continues the joyful celebration of the birth of Jesus with a basket full of miracle, miraculous events, including the turning of water into wine, the appearance of the Holy Spirit at the River Jordan, and the transfiguration of Jesus into a body of light on a mountaintop. The idea of a miracle can be understood in many ways. The Hebrew word for wonder related to the idea of miracle, there is no word for miracle in ancient Hebrew, may stand simply for a sign of God's goodness and power. And it doesn't have to be something supernatural, simply something that is a sign or something that is divine in its goodness and power. A miracle may also be an event that, that, though at first appears to be quite small, has an impact on a large that is, in fact, very large. We see the divine or something greater than ourselves working in the moment of the event, though at first maybe we don't realize it. We don't realize how big it is, and we only look back later and think, oh, this was, this was a miracle. This was something that was very important to me, something that I want to remember, that I don't want to forget, even if its significance is not as great to others as it is to you. We may become aware of numinous or spiritual dimensions in that event. So your miracle now or in the future may be something very intimate and ordinary, ordinary, or it may be enormous may blow your socks off, but whatever it is, be ready for it. And now we come to our time, our moment of remembrance and intercession. We light our candles. So I invite you to light your candles. We pray for the strength of heart and mind to look beyond ourselves and address the needs of our brothers and sisters throughout the world. For the rural and urban poor and for the rebuilding of our communities and for an end to the cycles of violence that threaten our future. We pray for all nations that they may live in unity, peace and concord and that all people may know justice and enjoy the perfect freedom that only God can give. We pray for the medical professionals and healthcare workers around the world. We pray for those striving to build a better world and for those working to make the world safer, more equitable and just for all people. And now I invite to unmute your, your, um, your audio. We pray for healing for all those whose names we offer now silently or aloud. Deirdre. Pamela and her mom. Chandler and other vaccination site volunteers. Berg, Sebastian and Alexander. Debbie. Glory to God, from whom all love flows. Glory to Jesus, who loved his, who showed his love through suffering. And glory to the Holy Spirit, 
who brings light to the darkest places. Amen. And now, dear friends, we come to our poem of the week by William Stafford. He was born in 1914 and died in 1993. He was an American poet and a pacifist and was born in Hutchinson, Kansas. In 1970, he was named consultant in poetry to the Library of Congress. The poem is called, You Reading This, Be Ready. Starting here, what do you want to remember? How sunlight creeps along a shining floor? What scent of old wood hovers? What softened sound from outside fills the air? Will you ever bring a greater gift for the world than the breathing respect that you carry wherever you go right now? Are you waiting for time to show you some better thoughts? When you turn around, standing here, lift this new glimpse that you found. Carry into evening all that you want from this day. This interval you spent reading or hearing this, keep it for life. What can anyone give you greater than now, starting here? right in this room when you turn around. And now I invite you to listen to the poem a second time. This time, allowing the poem to move through you, to continue the prayer of movement, the yoga of prayer that we began earlier as I read the poem. Starting here, what do you want to remember? How sunlight creeps along a shining floor? What scent of old wood hovers? What softened sound from outside fills the air? Will you ever bring a better gift for the world than the breathing respect that you carry wherever you go right now? Are you waiting for time to show you some better thoughts? When you turn around, starting here, lift this new glimpse that you found. Carry into the evening all that you want from this day. This interval you spent reading or hearing this, keep it for life. What can anyone give you greater than now, starting here, right in this room, when you turn around? Now let's come to Dadasana pose on our mat, sitting in an L, drawing our, our toes back toward our shins, our spines long, our shoulder blades down our back. Take your hands right at your lower right, so your fingers are right into your hips. Pull your belly in and feel your chest opening up. Draw your shoulder blades together and gaze up at the sky. And then release, pull your belly in, draw yourself forward and take your belly down onto your thighs. Lift yourself up and pull yourself towards your feet. You may not get very far. If you just, if you get to here, that's okay. If you're more limber, and your hands reach to your shins or your feet, that's good too. Just take yourself where you are. Breathe in and out. come back, pull your belly in, we're going to come back to that position we were before. This time, though, take your hands further away from your body, bend your knees, lift yourself up, 
hips up, heels out, toes slightly in. See if you can take your right foot up, cross it over your left. Bring the right foot down, take the left foot up, cross it over the right. Keep lifting your hips up. Left foot down. Come down, straighten out your legs. Exhale, bring your right knee into your chest. Taking the knee all the way up to your right shoulder. So you're really pulling it in. Your hips should be fairly open by now. And then take your right foot all the way across your body so that your thighs are pressed together and press that out and then bring your right um, then press your right foot into your thigh you can take your right hand around you can either grab your right foot or you can grab your uh, left um, elbow and then take the pose like this and then extend your leg long take your left leg up so you're really well first take it up into your chest and then maybe taking it up like a baby like you're holding it in your arms like a baby taking it around and then take it across your body so that one knee is on top of the other knee. So you're getting a nice stretch through these hips. And then bring the left heel in toward the left hip. Take your left hand around, it won't reach. Take your right hand onto your right ankle. Sit up straight. Extend the right left leg long, bend the right knee, take the right hand back behind you, inhale long, left arm up, far side, elbow far side of your right side, gaze over your right shoulder, inhale, lengthen your spine, rotate, look over your shoulder, release. Bend the left knee, take it across your left thigh, right arm up, turning to twist over your left shoulder. Release. And then we're going to come back to seated position for our alternate nostril breathing. For anyone who hasn't done this before, we close off the right nostril with our right thumb, close off the left nostril with either the pointer finger or the pinky finger. So we're gonna start by breathing in through the left nostril. And, and just to note that this is a calming, it's a purifying, series of breaths, but it's also a calming, it's a preparing for a closing down, uh, a coming down into a final resting pose. So it's a calming series of breaths after the excitement of our vinyasa. So again, close the right nostril, inhale to the left, close the left, exhale to the right, inhale right, Exhale left, inhale left, exhale right, inhale right, exhale left, inhale left, exhale right, inhale right. And exhale left. Take your hands down onto your thighs. Close your eyes for a moment. 
Take a breath in and release the air. You see, you feel yourself settling into your seat. Recall your intention. Say it to yourself. I am. Who are you for this practice? Do you find more space within yourself for that intention? Do you find enough space that you can take that intention out with you into the world for the coming week? Breathe it in, exhale any doubts about your ability to do that. Now lie down onto the mat. Coming into happy baby pose. Stretching back and forth, pulling your heels down, opening up your hips for one final stretch. And then let your feet go, extend your legs long. And on your next exhale, bring your right knee up to your chest. Inhale and exhale, take your right leg across your body for a twist. Extending the right arm away from you as you take the left leg across your body. And then roll on back. Exhale, bring your left knee up to your chest. Inhale, take your left knee across your body and extend the left arm long as you press the right hand down across against the left leg. Feeling the twist, the opening of your body. And then roll back onto your back, extending both legs long on your mat. So we come to our final closing prayer. You can close your eyes. Holy One, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us, and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray, amen. Now you'll hear our poem again, and I invite you at the end of the poem to call out a word that resonated with you. So as you hear the poem, prepare to listen, prepare to open your hearts, and let whatever word it is that most resonates with you, it doesn't have to have any rhyme or reason for why it matters to you, just whatever comes to your mind, grab onto that poem, um, grab onto that word, and shout it out when the poem comes to an end. You reading this, be ready. Starting here, what do you want to remember? How sunlight creeps along a shining floor? What scent of old wood hovers? What softened sound from outside fills the air? Will you ever bring a better gift to the world than the breathing respect you carry wherever you go right now? Are you waiting for time to show you some better thoughts? 
When you turn around, starting here, lift this new glimpse that you found. Carry into evening all that you want from this day. The interval you spent reading or hearing this, keep it for life. What can anyone give you greater than now? Starting here, right in this room, when you turn around. Glimpse. Now we have Shavasana for two minutes. So allow your bodies to relax, let your breath go. Allow yourself to descend into full quietness. Now take in a deep breath as you return to the world. Stretch your fingers, stretch your arms. Come over onto your right side. Press yourself up so that you're seated. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the watching shepherds to you. Deep peace of the sun of peace to you. Amen and namaste. Thank you everybody. Thank you for